how many things that you are partially doing? It's me, Lord. I love you this time, Lord. I want to know whatever you want me to do. Yes, Lord. Yes. I obey you, Lord. Yes. But here's the thing. I will obey if it don't cost me anything. Hi, I'm Bishop Donovan Miller, the pastor of my Olive Outreach Ministry, 729 West Quiller Street. Listen tonight, tonight, the word of God is going to come forth. I believe this word is going to touch your life. And at the end of this broadcast, I will be back to pray the prayer of faith for you. Everybody say the blessing of obedience. Now, the scripture said, if you do the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. I, I want to, I, I, I want to, I, I, uh, if y'all give me a little time, I hope I get, get, get a chance to get through my whole uh, outline here. But I want to, I, I want to show you some things. Okay. What does it mean to obey? Everybody say, come on with me. What does it mean to do what? Obey. Now, what it means to obey? To obey means to comply to comply it also means to submit submit yeah yeah okay yeah uh obey means to do that which has been assigned to you to do that which has been assigned to you obey everybody say obey now, we understand, comply, submit. Everybody say, comply. Everybody say, go ahead. And then it also means to what? Submit. Now, the word submit means to get under the mission of another. It is to get under the mission of another. It is to do that which has been assigned. Now, I want you to get it. Now, that's obedience. But what does the word bless mean? And there's many people, when we think about bless, we, 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 we look at being blessed. Y'all know, y'all know, I bless you. I mean, Cheyenne was sitting there, she said, Achoo. bless me. I said, all right. Bless, but we have not always understood what it means, what the word bless means. Now, I want you to write this down because I want you to get it. To bless. We look at as blessing as things. Now, but that's two words we need to look at when we look at the word bless. Okay, the word bless, that is the root of the word bless. And then that is the fruit of the word bless. Okay, the root of blessing is empowered to prosper. The fruit of blessing is the things you receive from the empowerment. I'm going to preach good today. Everybody say the root of blessing uh -huh, is an empowerment to prosper. Say that out loud. And what? All right. But the fruit of blessing, hallelujah, it is, uh, it is, it is the things that we receive from the empowerment. I want y'all to get that. So, when I say the blessing of obedience, what am I talking about? The empowerment of obedience. The empowerment, everybody say it, come on. The M of O. All right, so what that's saying is when I obey, that is an anointing. That is an empowerment that is released over my life. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22. Glory to God. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22. All right. Look what it says. The blessing 
of the Lord. Everybody say it. Come on. The blessing of the Lord. Come on, everybody, one more time. Say it good. Come on. The blessing of the Lord. All right, so we got to look at it when it talk about the blessing. The blessing of the Lord is. Come on, everybody say in. Uh, the blessing of the Lord in make us rich. What make you rich? The blessing of the Lord. So the blessing of the Lord is an empowerment. The blessing of the Lord is an. Uh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. And I'm going fast because uh, I, I'm, I'm going to make my time today. It a Remember the Lord thine God that gives thee power. What is that power? The blessing. What is that power? The blessing. Yeah, everybody say the blessing. Uh, so I, I, I want to submit to you today that when you obey an empowerment is released over your life. Everybody raise your hand and say, when I obey, and empowerment is released over my life. Let's talk about obedience. Do you realize that there are four ways that people obey? There's four ways that people obey. Number one, there is partial obedience. They have to. Partial obedience. Secondly, there is pressure obedience. That is I, I, I'm doing it because they made me. Third is partnership obedience. What that mean? If my friend do it, I'm going to do it. If everybody else do it, then I'm going to obey too. You see, that, 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 that's one of the things that robs us from the greatest blessings of God. God tell you, I want you to do this. This is what I want you to do. Or maybe let's just say for for instant prayer. Mm. Uh, no, no. Let, let, let's say yeah. We're we gonna we're gonna take two of. Them. Let's take prayer. God tell you, hey, I want you to spend this amount of time in prayer. Then you look around to see is there anybody else doing that? Well, God, why you want me to do it? Everybody else ain't doing. Oh, uh, it's like giving. God say, look, how much you get fifty dollars every Sunday in church? Then you be wondering, is there anybody else giving fifty? What did I say? I do it if you do it. <laughs> Everybody say, I do it if you do it. But then that's the most, uh, the most, um, I would say it, it is, it is the obedience that really caused the empowerment. And that is what we call persuaded obedience. Persuaded obedience is this. I have counted up the cost. I have seen what God's word says. And God, because I know you, I am persuaded to obey you. Y'all with me? Everybody say, I am to. But then I was looking at it. I was looking at it. Did you know God looks at the attitude that you obey in. He looks at your what? All right, let's say you tell the child, go take the trash out. They sh and then they come back, well, I did do it. But do you know that's how we obey God? Okay, God looks at the attitude in how you obey. That's what Isaiah 119. Isaiah 119. Everybody say, he looks at how I obey. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks how I do it. He looks at how I obey him. Do I obey him with a bad attitude? One time, uh, this guy came of the pastor Anna years ago and he gave pastor Anna offer and he say he got to him he said here 
I'm like, why wrong? You know, man, the Lord done dealt with me all day long. Take this money. But God looks at the attitude of our obedience. Everybody say, my attitude. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. This is so powerful. I want everybody to read it. Come on, let's read it, church. Let's read it. Go. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. All right, so I always like to read the scripture and, and reverse it. If you don't be willing, you will not eat the good of the land. So what God said, I don't want just raggedy obedience. I want willing obedience. And if you be willing, if you be what? And oh, you shall eat the good of the... Okay, do you mean to tell me I can be doing what God say without a willing heart and that disqualified me for the blessing? I did it with the wrong attitude so I'm unqualified for the empowerment. Why? Because I did it with the wrong attitude. All right, let's look at that in another scripture. Y'all with me? Let's look at it in another scripture. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7. I can do it, but my attitude can be wrong while I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm not willing. I mean, uh, 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 in, in leadership training, it says you have to be in a position to understand not that you got to, but that you get to. And if, if my attitude, everybody said that loud, if my attitude not right, then it, I, I risk the danger of not receiving the blessing for what I've done. Okay, let's look at it. Uh, are y'all ready? Look at this. This is so powerful. It's talking about giving. Let's read it. Look at what it says. Every man, according as his purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly. Okay, now this attitude, not. Nah. Come on, y'all. Come on. This is what? All right, not. Nah. Grudgingly. Uh -oh, on necessity. necessity. Come on. For God loveth a cheerful giver. So God say, even in your giving, he watch your attitude in giving. He even watch your attitude in giving. Yeah, I gave it. God said, but you had an attitude with it. You had an attitude with your giving. You was upset because you gave it. And God said, I want you to know I love a chill forgiver. Everybody say that loud. God loves a what? Okay, everybody say it again. Say, God loves what? All right, so what God is saying, I want you to obey me, but I want you to do it willingly. Not with the wrong attitude. Everybody say, not with the wrong what? All right, so let's think about it. Let's think about it. Let's, 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 let's really think about it. Okay. God say, I want you to do this. Okay. Okay, let's, let's take something simple. God said, I want to use your service. I want you to come to church. I want you to be, I really want you to be active involved. Whatever your hand finally do, I want you to do it. Matter of fact, what I want you to do, I want you to start and I want you to get up on the cleanup team. And God say, all right, whatever, I want you to vacuum. I want you to vacuum the church. I want you to clean the restroom. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm just throwing something out, right? And, and God said, you said, okay, God, I'll do it. All right, God, it's me, Lord. I say yes to your will, Lord. And then you go sweep one floor. Yeah, God, I did it. I said, yeah, but you did something, but it was partial. How many people are partially obeying God? Just, just, everybody say, get by. Okay, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Let's say the praise thing here. Okay, let's say the praise thing. I said, God, I'm going to give you my best service. God, I, I just really, really want to do everything you told me to do. All right, and then you come to practice and have practice. 
partial. How many things that you are partially doing? It's me, Lord. I love you this time, Lord. I want to do whatever you want me to do. Yes, Lord. Yes. I obey you, Lord. Yes. But here's the thing. I will obey if it don't cost me anything. I obey long that no cost. But, 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 but what? <laughs> okay, let, let, let's, let's think about Jesus, y'all. Let's think about Jesus. All right, when Jesus went to the garden, God said to me, there was a scripture said that Jesus, he prayed, he sought God, uh, and he was in there, he prayed for three hours, he was crying before God, getting himself prepared. He said, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup be, let it be removed from me. But then he turned around and said, Lord, not my will, but let thine will be done. What was he saying, Lord? I know it costs me, but I'm going to give you what you asking of me? How many people that want to do God's will if it don't cost? So we're not looking for cost. We're looking for convenience. But sometimes God calls us to do things that's not convenient. You know, I thought about it. God told me, I want you to start traveling more. And then I'm sitting there thinking, now, now wait a minute, God. I mean, I'm teaching school. I'm pastoring the church. I'm preaching two times on Sunday. I'm overseeing outreach. I'm counseling. I'm mentoring pastors. I'm doing all this stuff, God. I mean, why do you want me to go? That's cause. See, a lot of y'all think is, see, it may look glamorous. But it's cause. So then I go to convocation. This thing, it's been a this been a three-year process, Robert. 2022, God said, go buy, go get a car, because you gotta start traveling more. And they're like, get a car. Go get a car, because you gotta go. We went and got the car. I mean, listen, the car we was getting, that wasn't the car we planned to go get. We already had in our mind what we were going to do. We walked, we, 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 I'm going to show you what happened. We walked up, it, it was, we was going, we was going to get a Mercedes Benz, but we were just going to get one class up from where we were. We were going to get an E450, all right? Walked up to the car and the Lord said, that ain't the car. I said, come on, Anna, let go. I said, okay. Then I, 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 I step up just a teach and said, we're going to get that one. Get another. It's 450. That ain't the one. And we walk up here. Here is the car. And, and they're like, that's it. Everybody say, calls. So we, we obey the Lord in that. Then 2023, we go to the convocation. Go to convocation, get prophesied. You've been sitting down. You've been waiting, but you got to go. You have to go. You got to do what he said. Churches are waiting on you. People are waiting on you. God, I'm already busy. Can I, can I talk to them? I already, everybody say, I'm already busy. Do y'all know I teach three hours on Monday night? See, I got to teach three hours tomorrow. So how come you got to teach? Because he the one told me to do the school. Cause. Everybody say, come on, come on. Everybody say, what? Cause. Cause versus convenience. A lot of us living in the convenience realm. We're just so convenient. If it ain't convenient. Okay. This is what happened when it's not convenient. No, Lord. I'm tired. Okay, so 2023. We went to 2024 convocation. The first guest speaker prophesied to me. The second guest speaker prophesied to me. The third guest speaker prophesied to me. The fourth, 
Everybody said the same thing. Then all of a sudden, my calendar said, shoot, fool. And I'm like, okay, all right, all right, all right. Everybody said out loud, it's not convenient. Come on. But it costs. The cost of obedience. Can I talk to y'all today? Everybody say the cause of obedience. And see, can I tell y'all something? If you're going to reach the next level of glory in your life, if you're going to reach the next level of power in your life, if you're going to reach the next level of prosperity in your life, you got to get out of convenience. Over to the place it may cost me. But I'm going to obey God. Everybody say that loud. I'm going to. I'm going to obey God. And, and can I say something, everybody? Obeying is not always easy. It's not always easy. I was saying, you see, I, I wasn't going to preach. I wasn't going to do Bible study on Wednesday. I wasn't going to do the Bible study on Wednesday because I was like, man, I'm preaching all this time. I got all these days to pray. And then while I'm talking, the Holy Ghost said, but that's your number one assignment. Oh, oh Jesus. Think about what we are doing, y'all. We are doing what we want to do. We're not listening. Because it's not convenient. Some of y'all, God told you to be at both services, but it ain't convenient. So you know what you do? You come when you want to. I only teach the word, Donovan. Okay, I think I will. You already know what you're supposed to be doing. But you do it. Whether it so you're the, the determining factor, is it convenient? And if it's not convenient, I'm finna go home. You know you ain't doing that. You could be here happy. But it ain't convenient. Oh, the game started at one. Let me get on out of here. No, listen, church. It's, listen, y'all, let, 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 me, let me show you something. The vision of the church is not mine. It's all of ours. And when God add more, you need to be saying, God, what my part into the more? It may not be convenient, but, but God, what my part into the more? Because when I hooked up with this church, God, I hooked up to the assignment. And if it costs us, I got to get involved. Everybody say the blessing of obedience. You know, we bought our house. We bought our house. And I was just enjoying sitting back on the back porch with my legs stretched out. And just having a good time saying, thank you, Jesus. It's like, God, like, look, I ain't, I don't know. You got the help, but you got work to do. Everybody say work. Come on, one more time. Shout work. So let me go. Let me go. Anybody getting blessed today? Everybody say, I got to look at my attitude. Come on. I got to look at my attitude. And my attitude has been, if it don't cost me, I'll obey. But if it costs, I choose whether I'm going to obey God or not. But here is the key. If I don't obey, I miss the blessing. Everybody say, I miss the what? I miss the blessing. One day, I'm in there praying, and God says to me, Donovan, you've been faithful to me. You've been doing what I said. I'm going to bless you more. I'm going to bless you more. Because e even though, you know, you, you know, sometimes it's like, God, why I got to do double duty? Why I got to do double duty? I got a pastor. I got to oversee. Come on, y'all. Then I got to travel. Then I got to teach school. Why I got to do so much? 
Because God's looking for somebody willing. And when he finds somebody willing, look like he just unloaded on you. But then he turned around and said, but I'm going to bless you for it. Oh, y'all got to help me up in here. Oh, the obedience. Oh, the blessing of obedience. Everybody say the blessing of obedience. I like what Job said. If you serve me and obey, you shall live your days in prosperity and what? Pleasure. God say when a person do what I say, I'm going to bless their life more than they ever dream. I'm, oh, y'all got to hear me up here. I'm going to bless their life. I'm going to take them to the top. I'm going to bless them. I'm going to call them to wear what they never thought they could wear. I'm going to call them to live in what they never thought they could live. I'm going to call them to drive in whatever they never thought they could drive. And God said that's the blessing of obedience. Listen, I know that word just bless your life. I want you to know it is time for you to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Listen, all you have to do is just so simple. It's just admit that you need Jesus. To believe, believe that Jesus died and that he rose again. Confess, confess Jesus as the Lord of your life. The scripture said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want you to know that you can give your life to Jesus Christ and he will turn your whole life around. Listen, I'm going to pray. I want you to pray with me right now. Jesus will come in your life and turn your whole life around. Let's pray. Just bow your head with me now and say, Lord Jesus, I ask you now to come in my life and be my Lord and be my Savior. Lord, I ask you to wash me, cleanse me from all of my sins. Jesus, I thank you for coming in and saving me and changing my life. I thank you, Lord. I give you the glory. I give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Listen, you prayed that prayer and you believe that Jesus came in your life. Listen, go find you a Bible-believing church that will teach you the Word of God. Or if you would like to come to Mount Olive Outreach Ministry, our church is located 729 West Quilly Street in Griffin, Georgia, 30223. I will encourage you to watch us again at the same time. May God bless you.